Hello, it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and I'm back designing another layout for Paper Maze and I'm using P13's Soulmate collection again for this layout. So this layout I actually had planned out in my head and kind of sketched out roughly on paper before I'd even received my design team pack last month. So I always knew I wanted to make this layout, but um, it just so happened instead of it being the first one I made, um, it's ended up being the third one. So, but still really pleased that I've managed to get it done. It was inspired by a layout I'd seen on Pinterest that had two oversized banners on the background and I knew instantly it would work really, really well with this collection. Um, so I had it all sketched out, ready for my DT pack to arrive. And then I was obviously so excited to receive it that I just got cracking with it and um, didn't make this layout straight away. So um, I've come back to the idea. So this pattern paper here on the screen is paper number six and it's a gorgeous kind of canvas or hessian type pattern. And I really, really love it. I've bought a couple of sheets of it because it's just so gorgeous. And I've cut a, a really large banner from it. And then this patterned paper you see here is um, paper number three, I think that one is. So um, I'm making a second banner, but this one will be slightly larger and it's going to sit behind that first one. So these are gonna sit on the center of my page and then I'm gonna kind of build my layout, my clusters on top of those. Um, but there was quite a bit of faffing and trying to decide what size I wanted them. Um, and I think um, upon reflection, my problem was I didn't like the look of them on the white cardstock. So I do swap that out in a minute, but I think that was part of the reason for a lot of faffing because I just couldn't get them to a size that I was happy with. But I've um, decided on this size for now and I've distressed all the edges with an edge distressor. Um, if you follow me and my layouts, you'll know I like to distress all my edges and have a lot of texture on my page. So um, I always use a distressing tool, but if you don't have one of these to hand, um, the blade of a pair of scissors works just as well. Um, I would just say don't use the pair of scissors that you use for things like your fussy cutting because I did find it was making my scissor blade go quite blunt. So um, make sure you've got a spare pair of scissors for things like this. Um, and as you saw there, I'm still not entirely happy with the sizes, so I've chopped a bit more off the top of both of those and then just had to distress that top edge again. And now I'm just working on my placement. I wanted them overlapping, but not directly on top of each other. So it was just trying to get it to a position that I was happy with. And then I've just stuck them together um, just loosely at the top with some double sided tape because my plan is to stitch along the top of them with some black thread. So I've already done some work. Obviously I've used this collection for a couple of layouts already. So I've done a bit of work before creating this layout um, with fussy cutting. So I've got loads and loads of elements of fussy cut and these P13 collections are absolutely fantastic for fussy cutting. And it means you can really stretch a collection and get loads and loads out of them. So let's go through the papers because there's quite a few of these here. So the floral clusters you can see there, I've cut from paper number two and it's just a whole sheet of floral clusters and they're just stunning. Then I've got the moths have been cut from paper number three. And then most of the other elements are from paper number seven, which has loads and loads of different bits and pieces on it. So I'm going to use loads of those on this layout. So I've taken a break, gone off to my sewing machine and I've stitched across the top of both of those banners. I've done it quite roughly, I was not trying to make it neat at all and I've left the ends hanging loose to add a bit more texture to my layout. And I've figured out that I really wasn't happy with that white background so I've swapped it out for paper number one which um, you've seen me use on a previous layout with all the feathers on it for my Dreamcatcher layout. Well, this is the reverse of that one. It's a gorgeous brown wood grain and it's absolutely stunning. And I was much happier with the way my banners looked on top of this. So I wanted to add a little bit more to that background paper. So I've picked out a couple of Kaisercraft stamps. One is a kind of a cursive script 
and the other one has some clock faces on it so I've just stamped randomly on my background with black stays on ink not trying to get the impressions perfect at all um, I wanted it as rough as possible so I've just used kind of the center of the stamp and I've done it freehand I've not used an acrylic block at all or anything like that and then I've also added some stamping to the um, banner so just to bring a bit of that stamping into the foreground of the layout and now I'm going to add loads of splatters and make it a bit sparkly. So this is a gold metallic acrylic paint and I've just watered it down slightly um, and used a paintbrush to add my splatters. And I'm going to do the same with a black acrylic paint. Um, and both of these acrylic paints dry really, really quickly. I've not bothered adding gesso or anything to my background paper there because these P13 papers are really thick. They're such good quality that I knew I wasn't adding a lot of water so that I knew they weren't going to start buckling and warping um, just from the splatters. So I've not bothered with gesso. And then I've come back in with my banners here and I'm just adding some splatters to that as well. Most of this will obviously get covered up with all those fussy cut elements and embellishments and things, but I did want to have just that little bit of added interest there. And then I'm just going to finish that background off with some white splatters. This is white gesso that I've just watered down. I find that my gesso dries a lot whiter than my white acrylic paint. Um, so when it comes to using white splatters, I do tend to reach for my gesso more than my acrylic paint. And then I just set that aside to dry briefly whilst I have a bit of a tidy up because um, my desk was covered in splatters and it, it always is. I used to do my recording with a tripod, but I've recently had to change to one of those overhead um, like clippy things that hold the camera because my poor tripod was getting absolutely covered in splatters. So my black tripod is now like multicolored. It's quite pretty, but um, yeah, it was looking a bit much. So um, we swapped that out and it's given me a lot more space on my desk as well. So it was a kind of win-win situation. So I'm just going to add some layers behind my photo just to bring in some more of those patterned papers from the banners. So I've already mounted my photo onto white cardstock and it's a photo of my little boy at my parents' house <laughs> using their binoculars. He couldn't see out of the window from where he was, he was just staring at the kitchen cupboard <laughs> but um, I just thought it's such a cute photo and it works really well with this collection because there are a couple of elements that have um, binoculars so that's what I want, really wanted to use a pair of those binoculars on this layout and this photo it was just perfect for that so I've added um, some of paper number three behind my photo which is the same as I've used for that second banner um, and I've also added a, another pattern paper um, I can't remember off the top of my head I think it was the reverse of paper number two which is kind of like a black print with a map um, kind of faint map all over it but it just adds a bit more behind my photo and gives a bit of separation from that background and now I'm going to come in with all of those fussy cut elements and try and arrange them typically um, where I'd done this before stitching my banners I was really happy with the placement but obviously had to take it all out to do my machine stitching so now I'm having to rebuild those clusters um, and I'm not getting them exactly how I had them before, which is quite frustrating, but always the way. So I'm aiming for two main clustered areas. So I'm going to put my photo to the top left corner of that banner with um, loads of things clustered around it. And then I'm going to build a second cluster to the bottom right to try and help balance that out. But you saw how quickly these clusters came together. I just find these P13 collections, just once you've decided what you want to do, they come together so easily. because Everything just matches really, really well. Um, and it's literally, once you've got them all cut out, it's just a case of kind of almost chucking them at the page. And nine times out of 10, they the first place I, I put them is where they end up being stuck. I, it's not like I have to fiddle around loads like I do with other collections. So I am really enjoying these P13 collections. So I'm just going around now getting everything stuck down and I'm using foam pads on a lot of things because I do like to have a lot of dimension and texture so everything gets foam pads 
And with things like the moths and butterflies and uh, leaf clusters, I like to leave those um, loose. So I'll stick the main body of the butterfly down, but I don't stick the wings down. I like to have those sort of flapping up a bit with, to add some dimension. And the same with leaf clusters, I'll stick the main part of those florals down, but the leaf sprigs that are coming out, they don't get stuck down. So um, it just I just like the way that looks more, it gives it kind of a, a floating look. So just before I stick my banners down, I've decided I'm going to just cut the middle of that one out because it's not visible underneath and it's wasted. So I've cut that out because then I can use a couple of those moths on another layout. Um, so rather than waste it hidden away there unseen, they will get reused. So I'm going to stick my banners down flat because there is a lot of dimension already on the top of the layout. I'm sticking those down flat. And at the moment I've got those threads hanging loose. I did try tying some bows in um, either side, but I didn't really like the way they sat, um, just didn't look right. So they do get untied again um, before I've finished my layout. So now I'm just pulling out all the other bits and pieces from the collection. Now these are the actual packs of kind of like ephemera and tags and things that do come. So everything else on the page at the moment has been fussy cut. And these are the things that actually do come sort of purposeful for um, embellishing your layout. So I'm going to add one of those um, round cardstock um, pieces you see there of a compass. Now I'm just going to scroll through. I've got my iPad in front of me because I knew I would never remember where they're all from. So that one is from cardstock tags number one. Then I've got a sticker here with a pair of binoculars on it. That is from sticker sheet number three. And I'm adding some of my favorite gold metallic thread behind that. So this is by We Are Memory Keepers. It's a stitch happy one. And I, I love the way it just sits really nicely behind circular elements. Just wrap it around my fingers and then kind of manipulate it a little bit to loosen it in areas. That's also from Paper Maze and available on the website. Um, it's the only gold thread I ever use. I just absolutely love it. So I'm just adding a couple of clusters in there, um, sorry, a couple of tangles in amongst my clusters. And as you can see, I'm now untying those bows. Really didn't like the way they looked. Um, I've also added a clock at the top behind my photo there. That was fussy cut from paper seven, um, along with the owl that you can see. And also that big, massive black heart. <laughs> um, when I first saw this collection, I absolutely loved everything about it except for the big black hearts because I just looked at them and thought mm, they're a bit gory I don't think I'll ever use them but actually I think I've used at least two possibly even three I think I've put one on every layout so far um so they've kind of been tucked into clusters so they're not so obvious but um quite proud of myself for actually using them and then I got to this point and realized that I didn't have a title on my page so I've used um, one of the cut apart elements from one of the patterned papers and I'm just trying to figure out which one it's from. Um, typically now I cannot see it on my iPad. Nope, I cannot see it. Maybe it's sold out already, that's why, and it's probably hiding down the bottom. No, nope, it's not. So Lord only knows which paper I found that hiding on. Oh, there it is, paper number five. Sorry, I'm scrolling whilst doing this. Um, it's paper number five and it says, always look on the bright side of life. And it has a large pair of binoculars on top of it. But I've cut those strips out um, individually, leaving a thin border around the edge. And then I'm popping those up on foam pads and just placing it down to the left there. And I thought that works perfectly for my title. I've also added one of the tags just underneath my photo. I've just got the fishtail popping out at the bottom. That was, I believe, from cardstock tags number two. It's the wider of the two sets. So I just wanted to have a little something down there, so I've added one of those. And then I'm just finishing my layout off with a couple of sequins and I've got some gold jewels. Well, they're kind of more of a bronzy colour, but they work really well with this collection. So I'm just adding a scattering of those. And then that is my layout finished. So there is the final result. 
I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. It looks pretty much identical to what I had sketched out um, before I'd received the collection. So really pleased about that. So I'll leave you with some close-ups now. Please do check out the Paper Maze website. Um, there's quite a lot of this collection still available if you'd like to purchase it. Uh, if you'd like to find direct links to all the products, in the description box below, I will pop a link to the Paper Maze blog where you can find all of those. Um, but thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.